All right, uh, welcome to a Mattermost uh, brown bag. This is uh, Jorm from Mattermost. I'm a full stack engineer work, uh, for Mattermost. And I'll be talking about um, the Mattermost server application layer. So let's get started. Um, so the Mattermost server is a few different layers. Um, there's another brown bag you can go watch about the, the entire uh, Mattermost server architecture. Um, it was actually the first brown, brown bag that um, was done by our CTO, Corey. Um, if you want to go watch that. Um, but I'll give a quick overview of them here, and then I'll basically talk about the application layer, which is the focus of this uh, brown bag. So the first uh, server layer is essentially the, the REST API or network layers. Um, these are pretty much, if you want to interact with the server, this is the way you do it. You go through the, the REST API, you make a standard HTTP request to the API, so does some sort of request parsing. Um, and then once it's done that request parsing, it will take um, the data it now has and basically pass it to the application layer um, through a specific function. And the application layer will um, usually talk with the store layer, which is uh, to talk to the databases and perform, perform some sort of logic or manipulation on the data. Um, and then return it back to the API network layer for um, response uh, building and sending back to the, the requester of the client. Um, so we, we do this through, we have two current uh, API versions. Uh, we have the current version is API version 3E, and we're moving on to version 4. Um, we also have our WebSocket API, um, which has recently been moved to its own package um, linked there. Um, and then yeah, we have the application layer itself, the store layer, which I mentioned briefly, and then we have models and utils packages, which are um, models is just all our data models, and utils is um, just general utility functions and things like that. Um, so we'll be talking about uh, the application layer today. Um, so where did the app layer come from? So if you're a, a long time, or at least a decently long time contributor to Mattermost, you'll know that we didn't always have an app layer. Um, I think uh, Mattermost server version 3.7 was our first Mattermost server version to actually have, um, actually use the app layer um, underneath. So before that, it was all the all our logic for that's in the application layer was in the API layer itself. Um, which I mean was nice, but it didn't scale very well. Um, and one of the reasons it didn't scale very well is because we wanted to use a bunch of the the business logic and stuff like that. Um, in other places other than the API. Um, once the, the system became more complicated and complex and we wanted to offer more ways to um, interact with the system. Um, so some of, the, some of the functions that were in the API package were pretty much already split out into their, uh, similar to their current incarnations in the app package. Um, I'll, I'll show what that looks like a little bit uh, later. But um, basically the, what we needed was we needed a way to reuse and maintain application logic um, from packages outside the API layer. So and a couple examples, for example, um, the CLI tool. Um, when we want to run command line, uh, perform thing actions from the command line, sometimes you need to go and um, perform some sort of business logic. It makes perfect sense. Um, but if all our, our functions are in the are tied to our directly to our API, it doesn't work very well. So it makes lots of sense to split it out into an app layer. And then um, one of the things we, we want to do is move to an API version while still supporting the old one. And to do that, um, we didn't want to have to duplicate any of our application or business logic. So the, the sense there is to make an application layer, um, which is what we went and did. So um, what goes in the app layer? What is it really for? Um, so the the main way to describe it is that bus, essentially business logic I think is the the common term for it. Um, from Wikipedia, business logic is the part of the program that encodes the real world uh, business rules that determine how data can be created, stored, and changed. Um, so basically, what that means um, is anytime you want to perform some sort of action on the server that conforms to some sort of um, rules, they call them business rule, real world business rules. So for example. Um, Let's say I want to update a user, and I have in my one of the rules is I'm only allowed to update the users if um, a certain configuration option is checked. Uh, maybe it's a certain field of the user that 
um, gets locked when that computer when that configuration setting is set. So that's that's a, that's the type of rule um, that our that we've essentially come up with and enforce into our application. Um, so basically, the the application layer um, would deal with all that kind of business logic, where it's like, oh, is that config setting set or is it not set, and then return the result based on that. Um, so basically, any logic or actions that will affect the state of the server should be done through the application layer. Um, we're not perfect on this in their current incarnation of the application layer. There is still some um, some things in the API layer that directly talk to uh, the stores and things like that and don't go through the application layer. Um, but for most part, we're pretty good about it. Um, and yeah. So another thing is it should be application spe specific, not just a utility function. Like one of the one of the reasons we built the app layer is to, to be able to easily reuse a lot of this this logic. Um, but it needs to pertain uh, directly to the, the actual application logic itself and the business logic itself. Because if it doesn't, then it's just a utility function, and that belongs more in, in the the utility package or something like that. Um, yeah. So that's a little bit about what goes into the app layer. So what doesn't go into the app layer? Like I mentioned, utility functions. So these things should live in the utils package. Um, if you're if you're just passing in stuff and it doesn't really it's more of a helper function, things like that. It doesn't really go, belong in the app layer. Um, there are some exceptions to this, um, whether utility functions that need access to some sort of something in the application layer. Um, but for the most part, this is how we follow it. So um, we should make sure we're keeping utility functions outside the app layer. Um, another thing that shouldn't go in the, the app layer. So REST API endpoint handling. So it's specifically request parsing or response writing. So basically, all of the request parsing and response writing, while some of it might be code that can be shared uh, between, say, API version 3 and API version 4, um, for the most part, we should keep that separate. If we do want to share the code, we should have a common API package somewhere to share that. But it doesn't really have much to do with the application or business logic of our, our server and doesn't really belong in the app layer. Um, and then the last thing. Um, is permission checking. So permission checking um, belongs, is up to the callers. So if you have access to the application layer while you're developing, um, we assume that you have full permission to do whatever you can. You have full access to the server. So basically, if you're if you're building something that you only want certain users to be able to use, um, so for example, in our REST API, we do this all over the place. Um, we don't want regular user Joe Smith to be able to go update the admins uh, rules or anything like that. So basically, we have permission checking to do that. And that's handled right in the API layer itself for that specific endpoint. Um, the actual permission checking code, the code that does the actual checking, uh, lives in the app layer, but is called from outside the app layer. Um, we're not, not exactly sure that this is the best best place for it. But right now, um, it's the easiest place to keep it. And I kind of, I kind of view it as its own separate entity. but. For now, I think it's gonna it's fine to keep it in the app layer. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some of the things that don't go in the app layer. Um, the package layout. So here, I'll uh, close out of this real quick. Um, for the most part, there's nothing special about the the package itself. It's just essentially a bunch of files um, organized by type. So we've got post files or anything. Any actions if you go into here. I have to do with posts will be in here. So for example, create post as a user, um, create posts for general, handle post events, uh, send ephemeral posts, all these kinds of stuff. They're all posts related business logic. And that's why they are in the post file. Um, so yeah, all the, the files are just split out like that. And it's pretty straightforward. We do have a bit of um, uh, WebSocket stuff in here that uh, we have, I have a ticket to move out. But essentially, for the most part, the rest of it should be pretty standalone. Um, yeah, so let's go back to this. OK, so that's the package layout. Uh, when you're adding functions to the app layers, make sure they go in the right file. If you think a file is getting too long or you think that um, you need a new file for it, go ahead. Just make sure it's in in the app package. Um, some some best practices while actually writing the app functions. Um, so the first question you kind of want to ask yourself is, is this business logic related or server state related? 
Um, if the answer is no, your function probably doesn't belong in the app layer. It either belongs in as a function beside the stuff in your current um, package, whatever you're building, or it belongs in a utility package somewhere. Um, so like we said, business logic or service state related, probably app layer. Otherwise, probably not. There are some exceptions to that, but uh, we'll, we can deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we have a return pattern that we use for all the app functions, um, app layer functions. So basically, uh, every return, you can basically do one of two things. You can either return just an app error, um, which is our, our model for, our data model for our general application errors, um, or you can return the result and then an application error. Um, if it, like standard Go, if the application error is nil, that means the there's a, a success. So um, for example, like we don't do delete channel and the little example there, it doesn't do a Boolean to check if it's a success or not. It just uses, if the app error is blank, it's a success. If it's not, then it's an error. And then you can use that with the standard Go um, error checking patterns. Um, and then so a couple of things to think about when you're building these application functions. Um, you want to avoid unbounded Go routines when possible. Um, the reason for this is um, basically liberal creation of unbounded Go routines can cause high amounts of load on the server. Um, so the, the situation where this could be a problem is, for example, say, um, this is a problem we actually had in our server. So when you create a creating a post, that's something that happens a lot. If you have enough users creating posts, and then you have um, some sort of unbounded Go routine that uh, that gets fired every time you create a post, um, under a high amounts of load, the server can have the grow, number of Go teams climb because the Go routines can't complete quick enough for the for the server to catch up. Um, so then you just have an ever climbing number of Go routines until eventually you run out of memory and the server crashes. Um, so we have some we have some unbounded Go routines in the code, but for the most part, we try to avoid them. Um, if you want to use Go routines, it's great, but make sure you wait for them to finish for your return if you can. Um, that's that. And then uh, when using store functions, uh, do as much non-blocking work as possible. Um, so we have a lot of helper functions and nice and easy uh, functions all over the app layer for like get user um, and stuff like that. So you don't have to deal with the uh, this, the store syntax. They're essentially wrappers around the um, the store functions themselves. And these are great to use, but um, we should make sure that we're actually using the full, um, all the features of Go. And one of the features of Go is being able to do non-blocking work really easily while instead of having to wait on some stuff to finish. So for that little example there on the right, um, basically what happens is you can fire off to two different um, store requests at the same time. They return, all the store functions return channels. Um, we'll probably have a brown bag in the future talking about the, the store layer in a little more detail. But um, all you need to know is that the, all the store functions return channels and they'll return um, a store result and a store, a store error or an app error. And you can fire them off and then you can go do a bunch of work in the meantime. And then once you actually need those two, um, uh, those two users in that case, then you can actually get, wait on those uh, channel calls. And hopefully they finish by that time. If not, well, you've done some work already that you'd have to do after anyways. Um, yeah, so that's that's one of the, some of the best practices for the application layer. Um, it's pretty simple for the most part. Um, there's not much... Uh, there's not much to it other than they're just essentially functions that do the business logic. Um, and that's kind of good. So it's nice and simple. Um, so yeah, that's essentially the application layer. That was a nice and short uh, brown bag there, but um, stay tuned and we'll be having some more brown bags in the future and make sure to join prerelease.modernmost.com and join some channels. Um, yep, that's it. Thanks guys.